Have you noticed Big Oil just reported its profits, record profits? Last year, they made $200 billion in the midst of a global energy crisis. I think it's outrageous. Why? They invested too little of that profit to increase domestic production. And when I talk to a couple of them, they say, well, we're afraid you're going to shut down all the oil wells and all the uh, oil refineries anyway, so why should we invest in them? I said, we're going to need oil for at least another decade. And that's going to exceed <laughs> and beyond that. We're going to need it. Production. Fentanyl is killing more than 70,000 Americans a year. Big, you got it. So let's launch a major surge to stop fentanyl production in the sale and trafficking with more drug detection machines, inspection cargo, stop pills and powder at the border. My administration has cut the deficit by more than $1.7 trillion, the largest deficit reduction in American history. <clears throat> Under the previous administration, the American deficit went up four years in a row. Because those record deficits, no president added more to the national debt in any four years than my predecessor. Nearly 25 percent of the entire national debt that took over 200 years to accumulate was added by just one administration alone, the last one. They're the facts. Check it out. Check it out. How did Congress respond to that debt? They did the right thing. They lifted the debt ceiling three times without preconditions or crisis. They paid American bills to prevent an economic disaster in the country. So tonight, I'm asking the Congress to follow suit. Let's commit here tonight to the full faith and credit of the United States of America will never, ever be questioned. So my many of, some of my Republican friends want to take the economy hostage. I get it, unless I agree to their economic plans. All of you at home should know what those plans are. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Let me give you, anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. You know, it means if, if Congress doesn't keep the programs the way they are, they'd go away. Other Republicans say, I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks. The idea is that we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond, <laughs> folks. So, folks, as we all apparently agree. Social Security and Medicare is off the, off the books now, right? They're not to be started. All right. I'm ready. We got unanimity. Social Security and Medicare are a lifeline for millions of seniors. Americans have to pay into them from the very first paycheck they started. So tonight, let's all agree, and we apparently are, let's stand up for seniors. Stand up and show them. We'll not cut Social Security. We will not cut Medicare. Those benefits belong to the American people. They earned it. And if anyone tries to cut Social Security, which apparently no one's going to do, and if anyone tries to cut Medicare, I'll stop them. I'll veto it. And look, I'm not going to allow them to take away.
be taken away. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. But apparently, it's not going to be a problem. <laughs> Next month, when I offer my fiscal plan, I ask my Republican friends to lay down their plan as well. I really mean it. Let's sit down together and discuss our mutual plans together. Let's do that. I can tell you, the plan I'm going to show you is going to cut the deficit by another $2 trillion. And it won't cut a single bit of Medicare or Social Security. In fact, we're going to extend the Medicare Trust Fund at least two decades, because that's going to be the next argument. How do we make keep it solvent, right? Well, we'll not raise tax on anyone making under 400 grand, but we'll pay for it the way we talked about tonight, by making sure that the wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share. Look, look, look. Here, here's the deal. They aren't just taking advantage of the tax code. They're taking advantage of you, the American consumer. Here's my message to all of you out there. I have your back.